today. This new GPU competitor just got way better. NVIDIA's new DLSS 3.5 gets tested. NVIDIA claims that upscaling is the future, and Ryzen 8000 brings historic performance. Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. First up for today, I've covered the new gaming GPU competitor, More Threads, for a little while now. Their MTT S80 and MTT S70 were released not too long ago, but unfortunately, they definitely aren't considered powerful GPUs by any stretch of the imagination. But if we've learned anything from Intel, is that drivers are extremely important. And just recently, More Threads released a new driver that gives some serious performance updates. According to the company, it gets 40% higher FPS at 1080p and Fearless Contract, 10% better performance in a Zeta Corsa at 1080p, 40% better in CryEngine titles based on the 5.7 version of the engine, and 30% better performance in Valley when using DX11 mode, as well as some other improvements that didn't mention the exact titles. Ultimately, I'd say this is great news for the GPU market, as more competition means better hardware for everyone. But first, today's video is sponsored by PowerColor and their awesome new Devil Skins, the most unique way to customize your GPU that I've ever seen. They're basically these awesome looking backplates that let you completely change the look of your GPU. And what's wild is that they actually use magnets that attach to your Red Devil 7900 series cards so you can swap them out in seconds. These are freaking awesome. So add some style to your new graphics card by visiting my link in the description below. Next up for today, NVIDIA's new DLSS 3.5 update is here, and it's currently available in Cyberpunk 2077 2.0 with the Phantom Liberty DLC, and Tom's Hardware actually got a chance to test it out. Now, if you don't know what DLSS 3.5 is, I'll include my video where I go over it here, but basically it includes an AI-powered denoiser called Ray Reconstruction. Starting things off, when it comes to performance, one thing you'll notice is that with Ray Tracing Reconstruction turned on, performance is slightly improved versus without it, in all of NVIDIA's GPUs except, oddly enough, the RTX 4090, where it actually lost a bit of performance. When looking at the images they shared, the most interesting part is the comparison between the scenes with ray reconstruction on versus off. And as you can see, when ray reconstruction is on, it does look a bit better. It's not as soft, and when you look at things like the post right here, it has more details. But it's definitely not a huge difference, and as Tom's Hardware mentions, it's not perfect. Still, it's an interesting new tech that we'll have to see in more games before ultimately deciding. Next up, NVIDIA actually claims that upscaling is the future of gaming and not native resolution. The story comes from a very interesting discussion on Digital Foundry between Jacob Freeman and Brian Catanzaro from NVIDIA, as well as a few others. Now, the video is about DLSS 3.5's release, but in it, the NVIDIA reps were asked whether NVIDIA planned to make DLSS the main focus on future cards. And in the answer, one of them says this. And, you know, I think... DLSS 3.5 actually makes Cyberpunk even more beautiful than native rendering. Um, that's that's <laughs> yeah. my belief, is that actually playing Cyberpunk using DLSS is more beautiful than native. And the reason for that, again, is because, um, you know, the AI is actually able to make smarter decisions about how to render the scene than uh, what we knew how to do without AI. And I think that that's going to continue uh, to develop. And later on, he goes on to call native resolution the fake frames instead of DLSS. I would way, say right? that cyberpunk <laughs> frames using DLSS, including frame generation, are much realer than traditional <laughs> graphics frames. You know, if you think about all that. of the graphics tricks, like, you know, like, occlude, like all the different kinds of occlusion and shadows yeah. and fake reflections, screen space effects, and like, you know, raster, raster in general is just a a bag of fakeness, right? So like we get to throw that out and like start doing uh, path tracing and like actually get real shadows and real reflections. And the only way that we do that is by synthesizing a lot of pixels with AI because, you know, it would just be far too computationally in intensive to, to do, you know, rendering without tricks. So we're, we're changing the kinds of tricks we're using. And I think at the end of the day, we're getting more real pixels with DLSS than without. 
So yeah, I think it's pretty clear that Nvidia plans to focus on DLSS moving forward, which I really have to admit isn't reassuring. He's trying to say that native resolution is fake because you can have it look better with path tracing, etc., but that requires DLSS. The issue is that it only requires DLSS because the hardware isn't fast enough without it. So this idea that native resolution is fake just seems absurd to me. Now, the argument that it can look better than native with DLSS 3.5 is fine. I get that. But then why not take native resolution and just use AI to make that look better? Why even start at a lower resolution? Just use all of your Tensor Core resources for making that look better. See, everything you do at a lower resolution can be done at native. It's just harder on the hardware. Ultimately, this seems more like they're planning to use this as an excuse for why future hardware doesn't have to be that much faster. Maybe I'm wrong, but it absolutely does not look good. And lastly for today, AMD's Ryzen 8000 is set to be an absolute historic performance increase over the 7000 series. This story originally comes from Red Gaming Tech where, if you remember, we were originally hearing that Ryzen 8000 IPC performance would be around 20%, but now he's hearing from what he claims to be very reliable sources that it's much higher. In fact, we're talking a single core IPC increase on average of around 30%. And yes, that is in fact an average, meaning some applications can see it get even higher. Though I will say it sounds like the higher performance comes from things like AVX workloads. But still, seeing an average of 30% is absolutely massive. I mean, in CPU, IPC increases, I'd say we're talking historic. With that said, he's hearing that clocks won't be that great. Apparently, there could be a slight regress in clocks, but I honestly doubt we'd see anything like that from AMD. If anything, we likely won't see any improvements there, but with a 30% IPC increase, there's really no need. At the end of the day, Ryzen 8000 could be one of the biggest upgrades in a very long time. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for next-gen Ryzen? And what do you think about what Nvidia said on DLSS? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to pick up your new GPU backplate down in the description below. And as always, have a great day!